Hello and welcome to the Lebenspraxis Podcast with Josef Barz, where we explore practicing, living a life of purpose, actions and decisions and ask, what is the good life? Today I will start with a question that I received. I actually received it already some time ago. Um, there are several questions that I haven't have talked about yet. I will. I wrote all of them down. So this question I received after the second episodes in German. And so I will first read it in German and then I will read the English translation. <coughs> ich, finde die ersten beiden, ich finde die beiden ersten Folgen deshalb sehr gut, weil ich sowohl im Training als auch Arbeit gerne abgelenkt werde. Fokus zu finden und mit Konzentration und Blick auf das Ziel bei der Sache oder der Wiederholung zu bleiben. Ich finde es vor allem dann schwierig, meinen inneren Kritiker zu bändigen und mit der Frustration beim Scheitern umzugehen. Ich werde mich freuen, wenn du darauf kurz eingehen könntest. Now the English translation. I really like the first two episodes because I like to get distracted both in training and work. Finding focus and staying on task or repetition with concentration and eyes on the goal. I find it especially difficult then to tame my inner critic and deal with the frustration of failure. I would be happy if you could briefly elaborate on this. So the first thing I was thinking about when I was reading the question was what is failure? What is this actually? And does that in a sense exist, you know? Absolute failure. Like, does this exist? Because if you think about what you're doing as a journey, let's take training as an example. If you think about training as a as a journey, then in there's no real failure in an absolute sense. I mean, even if you... Um, at some point realize that you will not reach a goal. Yeah? Because maybe because of some injury or it can be also because you are too old. Yeah? This can be the case. <laughs> Although it's obviously not the best to hide behind your age. But then you failed maybe to set a realistic goal because you didn't know that it's too hard to reach or something like this or with yeah the amount of work that you put in so then you set a better goal in that sense is not an absolute failure no no like it's a part of the journey so every so-called failure is helping us to walk our journey and to steer the ship maybe a bit more better or precise. The inner critic. The inner critic. It's good to have, I think. I definitely have an inner critic that is actively working. And I would say perfectionism is on a scale, one extreme. And on the other side of the scale is dilettantism. So if you do things very badly. Dilettantism, I would say, is maybe worse than perfectionism. But they are the, the two ends of the spectrum of this so one that has in a sense no inner critic you could say no ethics not the ethics of the craftsman yeah the craftsman that is doing things properly because things should be done properly it's it's a goal in itself it's a it's a virtue in itself or it's a virtue to do things properly. Perfectionism means not finishing. Dilettantism means finishing too quickly. Perfectionism means not finishing. So that's the extreme of the of the inner critic. The thing is that 
or the reality is that you will never reach perfect. And that's okay. Because, again, it's a journey. So, with nothing I ever published, I ever thought it's perfect. But I think always, okay, I will publish this as part of my publishing journey. Yeah? And I work on it to the extent that I think it's reasonable. Who knows if I always... Um, <laughs> If I, if I always are so precise about that, yeah, maybe sometimes I could take more time, maybe sometimes less. Yeah, we have sometimes our moments in this and moments in that and also depending on, on what we care about, no? For example, I care very little about design. That's why I love, I love minimal designs because it makes me needing to care less about this. Yeah, but sometimes I care a lot about wording. Uh, when I'm, let's say, when I'm in a too much perfectionist mode. And then another day I go back to the text and I think, ah, yeah, okay, come on. It's all good. It's all good. But all of this is gaining experience, trying things, getting feedback, and becoming better at what you're doing. Although they're becoming better, maybe I would say it's discussable in a sense um, from a certain perspective, but let's keep it in, okay? You do your things, you try, you gain experience, you get feedback, and then you become better. But for this, you need the exposure. So if you are someone that is publishing or that is creating work that is supposed to be published, you need to publish. And you need to publish regularly i would say if we think about something like um training then you need to do the training <laughs> in that sense this is the sort of publication or if you're training for a certain thing then obviously you need to do the thing if you are competing in uh in something then you regularly you need to compete yeah but this is all the test like you need to do the test of it regularly and i talked about this topic of publishing also with mariana today and i asked myself when uh when people have a lot of this self-criticism and in if we talk about publishing Uh, um, where wh where is this critic coming from this self criticism is it what sort of let's say anxiety is it you know because if you're overly critical and perfectionist I mean it can just be that you're a bit neurotic But I think often it's also like, ah, no, it's not perfect. I cannot publish it because uh, I'm afraid that people will not like it or something like this, or it will not have the effect that it should have and so on. Obviously, <laughs> this is very important to, to have this craftsman approach to do things very well. But the problem with the perfectionist is that he doesn't or she doesn't publish. And you need to publish. Because otherwise you don't get a feedback. You don't know what is, how it is to publish, how does it feel, how do people react, and so on and so forth. And I think publication is sort of metaphorical for all sorts of things. Yeah. Also, let's say if your work is uh, not that you publicly publish something, but still you are somewhat working together with other people, no? And most works, you work with other people. I mean, every work you work with other people because if work means that you're getting paid, that's always someone else doing this. Is that true, what I'm saying? 
maybe if you're a miner, like if you if your job is to mine Bitcoin or something like this, then you're not really spending any time with other people. Okay, yeah. this job shouldn't exist. Is this a job? Mining Bitcoin? It should not exist. I decided now, should not exist. So it's maybe good to ask us, what are we afraid of? You know, for me, publishing is also, um, let's say, adventurous. Yeah, some things more adventurous, some things less, but it's always like, oh yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I'm understood <laughs> by the people. Yeah, they understand what I want to say. Blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm also uh, a bit sometimes suffering from this, the, the, this, the artist disease of of hoping you will be understood yeah but uh, not in a way that it is disturbing me in publishing yeah it feels uh, adventurous but i publish it's okay it's okay i publish because i know also like the what is the worst case scenario you know i know yeah Maybe people understand, maybe not. Nothing, nothing can happen. You know, let's let's say I would publish a a post that would be completely misunderstood and would create a shitstorm or something like this. Yeah, these things fade. Look at people that had um, massive shitstorms. Some time later, it just faded. Yeah. So even public figures, people people forget about it and. Sometimes, sometimes they, sometimes it's weird how people stay in the business, uh, in the show business, for example. I mean, there are cases where people have where it was definitely too much, and people have been taken out. If we think about um, Harvey Weinstein, is he called like this? Harvey Weinstein, yeah, the Me Too, uh, the the creator of the Me Too movement. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a bad joke that I just made or if it's a super bad joke, but I I leave it in. I don't cut it out. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, sometimes people people uh, get taken out, but he messed up completely. It's difficult to if you have a few, let's say, safety mechanisms in you, and realize okay, there are definitely some things that are super dangerous to say nowadays or to do nowadays and then you think okay shall i do this shall i not do this da, 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 da. what is the worst thing that can happen blah 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 yeah and for me i i mean i'm not very controversial in what i'm talking about um so i might sometimes think about what could be misunderstood in what I'm talking about and then already think about the argumentation that could happen if I have this anxiety coming up but as I don't have I don't really post so controversial things that I think for me is, is not so much of a of, the, of a thing I think my friend Sasha maybe has a bit more um, the thing that he sometimes says con co sort of controversial things or that it sounds controversial. Actually, if he explains, it's not so controversial at all. Um, <laughs> but he has also uh, a super low anxiety, which can be very helpful if you want to say controverse things. But if you have more anxiety, that might be a very good tool for you to think about what's the worst thing that can happen this is also sort of a stoic technique what is the worst thing that can happen if i do this if i publish this or if i not do this this is also good no like sometimes we have these things that we just feel ah, i don't want to do this but i should do this blah 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 then we think about what's the worst thing that can happen to me if i don't do it and if i do it yeah okay the worst thing if I don't do it is da 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 da. But the worst thing if I do it, hmm, da 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 da. What is worse? You can think about. Ah, actually doing it is is worse than not doing it. Yeah. 
Or, okay, yeah, actually, when I think about it, I cannot even think about many worse things or things that are really worse uh, or the worst things that I talk about, uh, that I think about the worst things that I think about. It's unlikely that it happens. It's very unlikely. Okay, good. So I go. Okay, so failure is part of the journey, I think. In a sense, there's no absolute failure. There's just things happening to us and some things work better, some things less. And every day we adjust. Yeah, Every day you steer the ship and then the waves come a bit from this side, waves come a bit from that side and you adjust to it. And I want to remind about the idea of the relaxed focus that allows us actually to stay with things. Um, the street sweeper metaphor yeah, from the book Momo. Okay, you just focus on the next stone and the next stone and the next stone and the next stone. You just sweep the stone in front of you in this relaxed way instead of getting hit by the hugeness of the task in front of you. So basically the idea of my super duper motivational speech continue. Maybe also a nice metaphor. To play music with the flute, you don't blow as hard as you can, but the right amount. And to tame the inner critic, the critic doesn't have to be tamed. It's not perfect. Doesn't matter. Time to publish. Yeah, it's ready now. It's good enough. I feel that, okay, this can be published. Yes, there can be things improved. Yes, I could file uh, on the words or on the, yeah, uh, sandpaper the wood more or train this move more ba, 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 ba. but now is publishing time okay i want to speak a bit more about limbs praxis in a systematic way so i already said that limbs praxis is basically an approach an approach to life i am putting on top of this approach um a method or a system to look at the things but that's not equal with the approach do you understand what i mean there is the idea and then there is a way to practice the idea a way that i propose but there can be many different ideas how to practice this approach of the limbs praxis I already talked about orderliness, I talked about focus, movement is something I'm talking a lot about for many years, uh, everyone knows that is knowing my stuff, so I will introduce some more parts in the next episodes, I will, I will um, tell you a bit about the different connections between them, when you could do what or look at what, because we know already you, you can shall or shall not look at everything at the same time, one step, one step at a time. You have to figure out or figure out with someone what are the parts to look at at the moment. And the one that I want to talk today about is the idea of primal stressors. Primal stressors are the stressors that are with us for a long time this way is primal so the first stressors these are environmental stressors you could also call them and environmental stressors so this is heat cold lack of food lack of water it's lack of sleep wetness, the wind, the sun, all these things. In today's Western world, we eliminated a lot of the exposure from these 
primal stressors. This is one of the civiliz of the task of civilization. Yeah, you are in Norway. There's lots of exposure to primal stressors. It's cold. There's little food in the winter. It's wet because everywhere is snow. There's a lot of wind. Da 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 da. da. So you. Uh, build a civilization where you build houses and the houses is is maybe the important factor more important even than clothes yeah you have a house in the ho house you can store things you can store food from the summer you have it warm it doesn't rain in there there's no wind da 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 da, da. you create this artificial environment where you take the primal stressors out very very intelligent if we need to go somewhere out of our houses we use clothes so sort of a mobile uh, version of the house and through our higher intelligence in logistics in farming in the western world it's very very easy to get food it's very very easy to get water But now the problem comes. This convenience, like I talked about before already, this convenience can make us weak. Or let's say it more strongly. It makes us weak if life is too convenient. Yeah, We benefit from exposure to the sun. We benefit from exposure to the cold. We benefit from fasting we even benefit from mild or very or occasional um, reduction of sleep not in the amount that many people face especially young parents in modern society that's too much in the same way like constant cold exposure can be too much constant fasting can be too much and so on and so forth that's one one of the things where a primal stressor is actually very present yeah the the um, lack of sleep so most people would be advised to sleep more but it can be actually very healthy and healing if you are sleeping usually a good amount to from time to time even not sleep a night at all yeah, which is part of our animal layer program um, where we play a lot with different primal stressors and one is sleep as well. By the way, we are preparing uh, an animal layer course, something new, something different way we teach these principles for 2023. And it didn't take Wim Hof to tell us that Exposing yourself to these primal stressors, like the cold, is a good thing. We know that for a long time. Yeah. In uh, Goethe's autobiography, he talks about, and I found it very funny that he talks about this. He talks about um, that that it's at the moment a craze to expose yourself to the cold at night like to sleep in a cold room and to use a blanket that is yeah just what is needed not more and also he talks about sleeping on hard surfaces so all these ideas of questions they are along for they're, they're around for a long time i mean goethe was not really a long time but you get the idea like this is nothing this is nothing new and I guess many of you have also done cold exposure before it was cool. Yeah, I have definitely done it before it was cool for us. It was a thing to go into the Baltic Sea where I grew up uh, around the whole year. Yeah, one thing was that we went on the 31st of December, for example, it was an important day for us to go into the ocean as well and in my family it's normal to take cold showers like everyone is doing this 
There's not necessarily a need to expose yourself to all primal stressors at once. You can play around, you can play with them. For, so uh, you can cycle that a bit. Uh, obviously with the seasons you would cycle anyway. Like in the summer I don't really do cold exposure. I do that in the winter. I mean, sometimes you go in the summer into a lake that is cold, but it's obviously not the same as in the winter. So in the summer is more like heat exposure. And you also don't have to do fasting all year round. Yeah, you can have times when you do it more, times when you do it less. There are many different ways. There's intermittent fasting. No, there's like fasting for longer, so for more than a day. And this more occasionally could be something like once a week, could be done a fast once a month or chaotic. And to have some chaos in there, I think it also makes sense for the shock effect. Although the problem is that chaos is a bit less uh, easy to program. So if you use an and chaotic approach, it can get lost or you program the chaotic approach which could be for example done with a, uh, with a tool that randomly gives you numbers and this make days where you will do the fasting for example and then gives you another number of how many days so there are tools in the internet that can give you random numbers where you can say okay i want a number from two to uh, from one to three for example or from one to 365 da, 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 da. and like this you can program some you can program randomness so you create an orderly randomness which makes you stick to the plan because it is pre-planned the nice thing about the primary stressors is that they are passive cold exposure is passive you just go under the shower or in the into the lake in a sense you don't really have to do anything you know it's enough to just be in the cold if the heat is the same fasting means you don't eat you understand and that's why you can sort of do it on the side like fasting you can do on the side it takes no time to do fasting cold exposure takes only very little time yeah in the beginning 10 seconds you are in for the first day next day 20 seconds next day 30 seconds and then you go to five minutes and that's enough for now yeah throughout the days five minutes every day good not more needed but why would you do primal stressors why would you work with primal stressors? I already said that they make it makes you stronger. It makes you stronger mentally. Yeah. Okay, I'm able to not eat. I'm able to endure the cold. You become more resilient. And that's very important. I started with intermittent fasting, for example, I think when I was 15. And I realized I had an advantage in many situations to the people um, the same age. They were really they were not used to fast yeah never in their life they had to fast there was always food around they realized oh wow you're pretty weak guys not uh being able to stay without food so this is a huge thing already it it provides you with a lot of freedom i can deal with the stresses of the environment no problem and then there is a lot of physical positive physical effects yeah if you just type in something like um, benefits of cold exposure into Google, you will find lots of different accounts. So people that have pains use cold exposure. I'm using cold exposure as a as an example because it got a lot of attention in the last years. Yeah, it can be useful for people with diabetes. Even it can boost your recovery obviously improve your immune system help in burning fat fight inflammation and so on and so forth 
these things like cold exposure, fasting has also a very strong effect on your mind. Many people report that on something like intermittent fasting, they feel more awake. Cold exposure, yeah, this pain, it makes you feel very awake. It can help you to focus. It can also uh, help a lot with your mood. Like people that are depressive report that something like cold exposure is helping them a lot. By the way, when we talk about depression, there is also something with using sleep deprivation called sleep deprivation therapy. One mechanism when you put your body under stress or when you put yourself under stress in this way is that you could say there is a questioning what is important and what is not important. So this you could describe as a cleansing effect of these primal stressors. It resets the system to realize I want to be alive and I want to focus on being alive and I want to get rid of the things that are disturbing this goal to speak very metaphorical about this topic. By the way, my friend Sasha claims that the different primal stressors have also a carryover effect to each other. So, for example, he claims that through his cold exposure, he can also deal better with sun exposure. Last but not least, uh, because I forgot to mention it and I'm pretty sure if I don't mention it, someone will comment. Breathing or stopping to breathe, like being out of breath, is also part of the primal stressors. So maybe for some listeners, primal stressors seem a bit of a side thing, but it can be actually fundamental in that sense that it provides you with a basic feeling of strength and resiliency. It sets yourself in, in um, how do I say, it sets the knowledge that you can deal with pressure, with stress on yourself, that you're capable to do this, that you're capable to endure things that come in and it provides you therefore with a mindset of I am here, things are happening around me, the environment is not just a paradisic island, yeah, but it is cold, it is hot, it is windy, I lack food and so on, but it's okay. I yeah, I can deal with this. It's not a problem. And from there you can take good action because there is no fear about this. There's no fear of being a bit cold or of not drinking for a moment. If applied properly, it releases free energy that you can use, helps you to get in the in the in your doing mood, in your energetic mood. Therefore, it's a strong thing and it's something to consider. Realize that more is not always better. Yeah, It's not about doing longer and longer and longer cold exposures. There is a balance in this, like in every other training, because it's a physical thing. Yeah, It's not uh, uh, the best to do strength training every day, all the time, and so on. There is, a, there is an efficient way to do strength training. Yeah, which is for some more, for some less. It depends on the on the on the person, and the same with these primal stressors. Okay, it doesn't mean you have to do all the primal stressors at the same time. Also, I repeat myself: you can just choose one and start with this, and from uh, time to time change it. Maybe you have two going on at the same time that you think about, but don't make it too much of a thing in your life now that. I need to work on this prime minister and this prime minister and so on. Better just choose one that you do regularly and that will be enough. It's a very low hanging fruit because as I said, you don't have to do anything for the prime stressor. You have to stop doing something. 
You have to stop going out of the cold. You have to stop to eat. Start slow and gradual. As I said, cold exposure, 10 seconds, fasting, skipping one meal. That's a good start. All right, guys, enough for this episode. One thing that is important for me to mention that I have set up a course now for everyone that wants to dive deeper into these ideas, into this approach of the Lebenspraxis, into taking responsibility for your life, taking actions, taking things into your own hands. And this course can be found on my website. Check it out, have a look, because there we put the things into practice. As always, I love your comments. I love when you send me an email with questions, remarks, comments, anything. This is what this podcast is living from. And thank you for listening. Until the next episode. Goodbye.